I had every intention of filming this video outside, but anytime there's been a break in the snow and I've gone outside, it starts up again. So going back to the house. Okay, now that we're inside, out of the elements, it has not stopped snowing, so it's probably a really good idea that I came back inside to do this. But welcome back to Adventures Never Far Away. I thought it would be a really good time to talk about my top 10 moments from my trip to Germany, and I can't wait to share them with you. Now these are in no particular order except the order that I remembered them in. I did have to look at all of my pictures to kind of help remind myself because our trip was so quick that it was really hard to actually stop and like reflect while we were on the trip, while we were going from place to place because there's so many logistics like figuring out which train to take, how are we gonna get from place to place, what time. So without further ado, number one, walking in to Marienplatz. So in Munich, in the town center, it's called Marienplatz. That's where they have all the buildings, they have the old um, town hall, this is where the big market takes place. And in order to get to this spot where the first market was, we actually had to take a subway, and so we kind of emerged from underground into the middle of this massive, massive market. Another reason why this is one of my favorite moments was because this was Elise's first time not only to Germany, but to Europe. And to watch her face as she saw the grandiose square that we were in was magical. And another reason why this is my favorite moment was because I could not wait to finally get my first glass of Kinder Punch. I don't drink alcohol, so I don't drink Glühwein, which is the mulled wine that you find everywhere around Germany this time of year. They have something called Kinder Punch, which is kind of a non-alcoholic version of that. Could not wait to get my first glass and buy my first mug. Number two, partying in a castle. Yes, you heard me right. We partied at the Hohenzollern Castle just south of Stuttgart. When we finally got there, it had started snowing. We're going up to this castle that looks like a really big version of Hogwarts perched on top of a hill. Like I said, it's snowing, there's lights everywhere. You could just feel the festiveness in the air, walking up into that castle, going into the chapel that was right there, being able to tour the castle, well, at least a really small part of it. <laughs> this is insane. And seeing all the beautiful Christmas trees that were in each and every room that we visited, the best part was being able to walk around the castle, even before we actually got into the, into the stronghold, into the keep, we were able to walk around the perimeter of the castle and kind of be by ourselves. So we finally made it up to the castle, the Hohenzollern castle, and it's snowing and it's perfect. You can't see anything behind me, but it's a big forest. Can you see the castle? Um, no words. Snow is a natural sound insulator, so it was very quiet. Being able to see kind of where we started, see the train station, where we were. It was just, it was a surreal moment. Being able to stand outside in the dark with lights on, snowing, eating our dinner, drinking our uh, glasses of Kinder Punch. It was something out of a fairy tale and it was something that, again, I will always hold on to. Moment number three, kind of all the train travel that we did and being able to finally get back into the groove of Germany. Wait a minute. We had to run, but I wouldn't be back back in Europe if you weren't ready to catch your train. I love train travel, especially in Germany. We have so many options. It was so great. We went on every kind of train you can imagine. And then to be able to feel the pulse of all of the train stations was really invigorating and it reminded me how much I love train travel. Number four was the city of Rothenburg, Ob der Tauber. The entire 24 hours that we spent in this cute little town, I'm trying to encapsulate into one big memory from getting off the train and having to walk through a cemetery to get to the old walled city 
walking into the walled city for the first time and being completely blown away that this place is still intact and it does in fact look like the pictures and then walking to our hostel which was inside the old city and then realizing that it was right next to the city walls that you could walk on before we even went to our hostel we started walking on these city walls and looking at the views and just marveling the fact that it was just there we could just walk on these old city walls look through all the holes where they would have their armaments to defend the city you know hundreds and hundreds of years ago the fact that it was just right there next to our hostel was absolutely incredible and mind-boggling as a historian like i just i was ready to cry the entire time it was that awesome and then going from our hostel trying to find you know the the christmas market in the center of town realizing that we just walked past the house like the bend that you see all over instagram with like the harry potter music playing realizing that was right there was like on our way like we didn't have to go out and search for it we just happened upon it right after we happened upon some lady walking her goats and then our hostel ended up being kind of i don't want to say creepy because it really wasn't but it was like really dark to get to we checked into our hostel we didn't realize that there was actually a second building that we've been sequestered to and it looks like something that um might come out of a scary movie let's um let's go check it out i'll show you what i mean So you can't see, and that's kind of the point. Creepy outhouse thing. This is our hostel, accessible only with key card. Ah, oh, thank you, Elise. To the foyer. This is the common area. Looks like there's ping pong, restrooms, a phone. No clue what any of this other stuff is. This is the common area we're supposed to hang out, get a Coke. What? It's the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, cool door. Right? Okay. This is our staircase. You have to remember to turn on the light. That's all it did. Okay, here we go. So here's our hallway. It's dark. A little scary. Sounds like there's people in there. Let me show you the bathroom real quick. <laughs> yeah. Where's the light switch? This room is aid. It's cool. It's squeaky. Very squeaky. Number five. Getting locked in a church in the town of Tübingen. And it was so quaint and beautiful. Sticking with the Harry Potter theme, it was kind of like walking into, uh, what is that, Diagon Alley or Hogsmeade or one of those towns that's like so picturesque in the movies. It was just like that with Christmas Market kind of like sprinkled throughout little stands everywhere, little stalls. It was snowing. Everything was centered around the big church in the center of this square. We went in and there happened to be this lady who's playing a flute and she was practicing with the organist kind of up on the loft where they have the organ and all the pipes. So we're walking around. There's a couple other people in there. It was great. We're touring around. It's beautiful, beautiful church. It was dark, late at night. It was snowing. So it was kind of like this extra moody feel to it. And we found some stairs that led up to kind of like, not, the, not like the loft. 
I guess. And we were just sitting there just enjoying the music. The flautist was amazing, even though they were just rehearsing. I just kind of had this feeling like, hey, we, we just heard this guy or a person walking around and we could hear keys jingling. I wonder if he was locking everything, but there's still people in here. They're still rehearsing. So like, we're okay. Then we decide that we're gonna that we were ready to go and we walk down and i'm still taking some pictures and elise gets to the door first and she turns around and she says it's locked so we try another one it's locked we find a third door yep it's locked so then we think okay like what do we what do we do we can still get out because those people are still in here practicing i don't want to go up and bug them and be like hey you're practicing really well but can you let us out so we kind of crept around a little bit found this like back cove, this back room, and this guy just happened to appear and he was like the keeper of the keys. And in broken German, I'm trying to tell him that we're locked in, like the doors won't open. And he it's like, no, they're, they're unlocked. You can just go. I'm like, no, they're, we wouldn't be here if they were unlocked. And he had to pull out this, ma I wish I had a picture of it, this massive key ring with like 30 different like old timey keys on it. And he, he, took us to the door and unlocked it and kind of laughed at himself like oh sorry I guess it is locked and that was the time that we got locked in a church in the middle of Germany number six dancing in the town square of Ludwigsburg to a grassroots rock band playing Christmas music yes it's as epic as it sounds <laughs> we were actually in the town of Ludwigsburg which is very baroque and we were in a in a church that was right next to the market just listening to the service we were singing along and we exit the church and we had actually just had a conversation about how we were having such a great time but the one thing that we didn't really notice was there wasn't a lot of christmas music being played we would have assumed that there would have been some like speakers around the markets playing you know christmas carols that you know are world famous so that everybody could understand even though you didn't know the language you could know oh that's jingle bells we didn't hear that and so we start walking back into the square where the market is and we happen to be right next to the stage where this grassroots band is doing a sound check. And then they start playing Christmas songs. We were front center for this Christmas concert in the middle of Ludwigsburg. Love and understanding. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hey! Number seven, finding the magical courtyard in Stuttgart. We had been all over the markets in Stuttgart. There were different ones. There was a Finnish one. There was like the big one that was sprawled out. There was the kids section. And we had just had the best time. It was a very unique market. They had lots of different things. And as we were walking kind of back towards the Finnish market where we wanted to fin <laughs> finish out our night, <laughs> we happened to walk by this opening that had Christmas lights on it. I actually didn't even notice it. And Elise was like, hey, like, can we go in here? Like, yeah, of course we can. Not knowing that it opened up into this grand courtyard. So we were walking towards our next destination and Elise saw some pretty lights. And she was like, hey, let's go see what those are. So we did. It turns out it's this beautiful courtyard, which happens to be the backside of a museum. So lesson of the day follow the lights and always say yes to an adventure. And just being able to walk into this courtyard and sit on a bench and just be in the middle of town where it's really busy, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of noise and have almost like this oasis of silence in the middle of this grand Christmas market was magical. And we just sat, I'd say for a good half hour, just enjoying. And it just was a good reminder of how many times we are just go, 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 go during our travels and we don't actually take the time to sit and enjoy something that we find and realize that is going to be one of the highlights of the trip. So for number eight, we're going to go back to Munich. And one of the highlights was going to the different Christmas markets that were in the city. Most cities have one Christmas market. It's located in the center of town, right next to the train station. It's easily accessible. But you'll find that a lot of the bigger cities have various Christmas markets kind of spread throughout. Going to visit three different markets in Munich 
each had their own different feel was amazing. We went to the main market in Marienplatz, which was huge, it was overwhelming, that's where everybody was. It was, we kind of felt like we were being shuffled around and not really having the time to like browse. But then we went and we found uh, the pink Christmas market. It was beautiful, it was bright, it was colorful. We got some really good food, really awesome vibes there. And then on our last day, before we headed back to the States, we were back in Munich and we went to a Christmas market near in Odeonplatz, which was in this palace courtyard. And although we were in the same city, it felt like a different market. There were different things there. There were different things to look at, different things to eat. So going to three different markets that had three different feels in the same city was magical. Number nine will take us back to Ludwigsburg. Now I'm not saying that that is my favorite market, but it was pretty special. But one of my most favorite memories was just sitting against the church and people watching. There's this term, this German word called Gemütlichkeit, which kind of means like cozy, enjoying the company of others. It's similar to the Danish like Hygge, where it's just this concept of hanging out with your friends, enjoying each other's company, talking, and just kind of taking it easy and relaxing together. People in Ludwigsburg that were at this market seemed to be embracing that concept so perfectly and it was so beautiful to watch. When you go to the markets, they have food stalls, but instead of like tables and chairs, they have these stand-up tables where everybody kind of congregates around. Even if you don't know people, you ask someone, you know, is this free? And you just kind of join these people around a table, you're all just kind of sipping your drinks, talking about everything, and it's just this great sense of community. And seeing this actually in person in Ludwigsburg was so peaceful to me, and it was so reaffirming that Christmas markets aren't just about, you know, the stalls, they're not just about, you know, going to take all your pictures, it's actually about community bringing people together and giving people a place where they can feel comfortable, relax, and enjoy one another's company. Number 10 were all of the food experiences that I had in Germany, but the most notable ones were having my first German Stollen in Germany, having my first roasted chestnut, being able to try chocolate dipped chilies for the first time, and then the last one was having Indian food from a stall in Tübingen in the middle of Germany. And then being able to talk to the people that were next to me and answer their questions about the Indian food and try to help them figure out what to get. Being able to say all that in German and be understood was absolutely incredible and just this manifestation that I needed that I haven't lost all my German. I could still express myself and I could still talk to people and communicate. So that's it. Those are my top 10 moments. It's really hard to you know narrow down when every experience that you have is so amazing and so life altering and so memorable to pick any kind of favorites. But these are the 10 that really that stood out the most and then when I when I think about my trip, when I reflect on it, these are the ones that come to the front of my mind. Until next time, we'll see you on the next adventure.